Nicholas here. Today I'm going to talk about Emotep, which is a game where you'll help build some of the monuments in ancient Egypt. More specifically, you'll be helping to quarry some of the stones and deliver them to the different building sites. It seats two to four players and plays in about 40 minutes. Here we have a three player game of Emotep in progress. In each round, only some of the ships are available based on the current round card. On your turn, you have a few options available to you. Perhaps this player chooses to take stones from their quarry and place them onto their sled, making them available for use. This player might choose to take a stone from their sled and place it onto an open space on any ship. This player might choose to sail a ship, assuming that it's met the minimum number of stones re required. Note that they don't have to have stones of their color on the ship to sail. They simply choose the building site and then unload the boat. The fourth and final option that you have is to discard one of these blue cards, which usually lets you do two actions in a single turn. This one allows you to take up to three stones and then immediately place a stone onto a boat. When a ship sails to a building site, it's done for that round and will not sail again during it. Furthermore, the building site will also not receive any more ships in that round. The ship is always unloaded front to back, with each stone providing some benefit, however the details vary from site to site. At the market, when your stone is unloaded, you can take one of the face-up cards, which give you in-game victory points, or possibly allow you to perform a special action later, or allow you to place a stone into a building site. At the obelisks, you simply place all the stones of your color in a stack, and then at the end of the game, you rank the players based on how many stones that they delivered and they score victory points. The temple is built in horizontal rows, and at the end of each round, you look to see whose stone is on top of each column. They will score one point for each column that they're on top of. In the burial chamber, you'll score each contiguous group of stones separately based on its size. In this example, gray has two groups and white has one. The pyramid is unloaded in column fashion, and you simply score victory points immediately as printed on the board. Once the bottom level is done, you'll start on the next level. So I think the general pattern in Emotep is very simple and clear. That is, you're going to take stones from your quarry, load a bunch of them onto ships, and eventually sail the ships to the different building sites. However, there's still a good amount to consider in terms of what exactly you do and when you do it. For example, at first glance, it might seem like taking stones from your quarry is the obvious choice if you don't have any on your sled. However, it might actually be more important for you to sail a boat. Perhaps because an opponent will place a block on it that will score them a lot of points. Or you think that someone is going to sail it before your turn to some place that you don't want it to go. You might also want to take stones, even though you still have some left on your sled, perhaps to push later in the round or in a following round. Less commonly, you might simply want to stall and see what your opponents are going to do. It's a pretty interactive game and you often want to observe what people are doing. And if they do something that surprises you, you need to consider why they did that and of course possibly react. Incentives play a large role here. For example, you might think that someone is going to contest the first place majority in the obelisks, which is worth a lot of points. And you'd like to contest one of the lower ranked majorities in the obelisks. So you'll place a stone onto a ship that has a bunch of theirs on it in the hopes that they will sail that ship on their turn, therefore benefiting you in terms of getting the stones to that location and you didn't have to spend an action doing it and can instead place a stone onto a different ship. There's still a good amount of hedging though that you need to do because being the first off the boat is not always a good thing, particularly in the pyramids. And that's about it in terms of considerations for your turn. I do want to note that the game has a good amount of variety, I think, in the building sites. I just did a quick overview of the different A sides, but all of the boards are double sided. And the other side is, in my opinion, usually more interesting because it provides a different way to score 
or more commonly on the B sides, there will be some combination of points and doing sort of actions in addition to scoring or instead of scoring. And sometimes you have to make a choice between those two. Some things I think are less great in Emotep are that it's very easy to feel like you're way behind, particularly if most of your points are going to come from in-game scoring. For example, you might see that someone's out 15 points ahead of you and think you have no hope of catching up because this is a pretty low scoring game. But actually, if you win the majority in the obelisks and that gives you, say, 10 points relative to them, and you get another five points in the burial chamber in in-game scoring, then you're back in the game to possibly win it. It's also significantly less good, I think, as a two-player game, simply because you don't have the incentives and piggybacking that you do with three and four players. Just due to the zero-sum nature of two-player games, uh, there's not going to be a position where you can sort of piggyback on some action that you expect your opponent to do and get extra points out of it that way. Uh, lastly, it sometimes happens that someone will make a move that really hurts your position and you don't understand why they did it. Like you just cannot fathom what the heck they were thinking. Uh, and that's of course unfortunate. Uh, in a game as short as this, only 40 minutes, I'm not too worried about it. I think that's all. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And otherwise I'll catch you later.